And welcome back to this special edition of the Factor Uncensored, where we're focusing on COVID-19. The COVID-19 vaccine has been on the market in the U.S. since about December. The vast majority of people have had access to it starting this spring, and a lot of employers and businesses are now requiring it. We talked to our senior legal analysts about the legality of that, plus the new talks of reinstating mask mandates. And joining us now here on the Factor Uncensored is Chris Tritico, Fox 26 legal analyst. Chris, we are now seeing things change again, once again in this country. Some municipalities, some private businesses, some employers are asking people in some cases for vaccination cards before you enter a building, before you come back to work. They want full face coverings. Are any of them crossing the law? We always hear about HIPAA violations, privacy, are they crossing the law, uh, crossing the line when it comes to the law? So a, a private business can, can require whatever they want. And so if you, a, a private entity can require you to, to show that, that card, they can require you to wear a face covering. They can pretty much require you to do whatever they want to do business with them or come into their, uh, come into your built into their building. Government, however, has to follow whatever the law is of their jurisdiction. In Texas, Governor Abbott has issued an executive order as of July 29th that mandates that no governmental entity in Texas issue a requirement that anyone wear a, a face covering or be required to get a vaccine. And so that will contradict Mayor Sylvester Turner who is now requiring, as of Wednesday, face coverings for municipal employees. So how do you deal with that, Chris? Well, it overrides Sylvester, Mayor Turner's uh, executive order. And so, and I think it was in direct response to Mayor Turner's uh, or executive order. Governor Abbott's order will override that and supersede it, and Mayor Turner's order will not be effective. So what if you get an employee who comes to City Hall tomorrow, Wednesday, and say, well, the governor said, I, I don't have to wear a face mask. Does that, that person that, risk being fired, sent home, suspended by the city because the city says so, even though you're saying legally the state supersedes the city government? That's correct. And he can't, the, the, a, a municipal employee cannot be uh, fired, suspended, or otherwise uh, sanctioned for uh, not following a mandate by the mayor when they've been superseded by the governor's executive order. That's already been litigated. And, and when the governor uh, overrides municipal authority, the governor's order uh, wins. That makes for a messy situation, though. You got the employee who wants to do, I guess, what they want to do, but the city is saying you have to do this. The state is saying you don't have to do that, and you're caught in the middle. Right. It, but it, it is. It's a sticky situation, and it's unfortunate that politics gets in the way of these things, and this is all political in my view, uh, and it shouldn't be happening that way, but it is. And, and, and there's a whole lot of people caught in the middle. So Dr. Ali joins us now. Dr. Ali, I'm gonna say damn what the elected officials say. I wanna go to the science, the doctor, the medicine, you. What would you suggest if the city tells you you have to come to work tomorrow with a mask on? What would you do, even though the governor says you don't have to wear a mask? What would you do in a situation like that to be safe dealing with only the science? Isaiah, I would tell them that, listen, these masks work. They help to reduce the transmission of this virus. This is a very deadly virus. It has killed millions of folks across the world, and we're still seeing the ramifications of this. The hospital beds are full. We're seeing folks that have not been vaccinated are getting severe illnesses. They're ending up in the hospitals, ICUs. And so I would tell them that, listen, don't, if you're not gonna do it for you, do it for the community, do it for your family, do it for your friends, use that mask. Uh, as uh, you need to, as required by the state, uh, because it will protect you, it will protect others, and it will help us get to back to a state of normalcy that we long desire uh, in this country and all over the world. 
And should we continue the other tips that we received from you guys in the medical community when we first saw of this began, including hand washing, sanitizer as well? Do we keep all of that going now that we're seeing this deadly uh, Delta variant? That is correct, Isaiah. We continue to utilize those. The additional thing that I want to make mention of is that the Delta variant is more transmissible than the Alpha variant, the first variant that existed that caused all this chaos to begin with. And what I mean by that is we had the six foot rule, right? Mm -hmm. That six foot rule may not be as effective because the transmission of this, given that this virus, is, the, the variant itself is so much highly transmissible transmittable, the six feet may not be enough. It may just be three feet or two feet. That data is still out there uh, and, uh, and we'll find out with a little bit of time. But I want to continue to urge folks to, number one, get that vaccine. We have, it's been almost a year since this, this vaccine has been out. We're seeing how successful this is. Mm -hmm. Yes, there will be breakthroughs. There's no vaccine in this world that is 100% foul proof. So yes, they'll see breakthroughs, but it'll be very small and those folks will only get mild illnesses. Just like that congressman that recently got this, he was fully vaccinated. However, his symptoms are mild. He is not in the hospital. He's not on a ventilator uh, and uh, he's gonna recover from this.